and each year in equipment. So truly, this will affect our consolidated equipment accounts to come up with the net assets in, or the net equipment value. The two pieces we do, so we combine the both accounts. We need to take into account that excess allocation. We needed to take into account that depreciation on that excess fair, mark, fair value allocation to come up with the consolidated balance. So if the parent has another method in which to provide the inner company investment, ultimately it's going to not affect any consolidation totals at all here. So now let's look at D. If Haynes has applied the initial value method to account for its investment, what adjustments are needed to the beginning of the retained earnings on a December 31st, 2015 consolidated worksheet? How would this answer change if the partial equity method had been used? And how would it be different if the equity method had been used. So to figure out the retained earnings under the initial value method, the parent would have shown in the um, income under initial value, they show the report the dividends of 50,000. That's all under the initial value they're going to show. They don't report the income in the subsidiary minus the dividends. They're just showing it on a cash basis, 50,000. So therefore, we're really understating our income by the difference of the income of 110 minus the 60, 000, the 50,000 which is basically we're understating understating income by 60,000 using that initial value method. Then they don't record any amortization at all. So the 4,000 each year, excuse me, the 4,000 in amortization understated by 60, the amortization of 4000 wasn't being recorded at all. So basically the difference, the 60000 of income they understated minus the expense, the amortization of 4, is a net 56000 that is understated in the retained earnings section. So the entry C for the initial value method, we would have to, in our worksheet, increase the subsidiary's book value during prior years and excess amortization gets expensed. So what we would need to do to show this in the retained earnings is debit investment in sub for 56,000 and retained earnings. This is the Haynes retained earnings for 56,000. Because the initial value method only reports the dividends. Now it then asks us how would this be if we did the partial equity method? So let's think of the partial equity method. Partial equity method takes into account some items, but I don't believe the partial equity method takes into account the amortization. So they, the partial method equi, um, account shows the income of 110, but they don't show that amortization piece. So we would have to report that retained earnings 
which we're reducing our retained earnings because they haven't reported it. So in a way, they've overstated the income. So we need to debit that to show that allocation, and we would need to show investment in sub for 4000 So basically, the initial value method only takes into account dividends, that's it. So we need to show the difference between the dividends and the true income, and then subtract from that the allocation. Partial equity method takes into account the income, but doesn't take into account the, out, the amortization. Under the equity method, um, the consolidated earnings is going to equal the parents' retained earnings, so we won't need to do anything if we use the equity method here. Does that make sense? Any questions? We're going to move on now to the next problem where we talk about goodwill impairment. So, as you look here, <coughs> with 17, Francisco acquired 100% of the voting shares of Beltran on January 1st of 2014. In exchange, Francisco paid 450000 in cash and issued 104,000 shares of its own dollar par value stock. On this date, Francisco's stock had a fair value of $12 per share. The combination is a statutory merger with Beltran being dissolved as a legal corporation. Beltran's assets and liabilities are assigned to a new reporting unit. So we see here the fair value of the Beltran reporting unit for the four, um, January of 2014. And then we show the fair values in January of 2015 with the book values in January of 2015. So we can see here the um, fair values for the most part are equal. You can see the inventory is up a little. The patents are up 100,000. Customer relationships are up 30,000. And the equipment net is up 5,000. So as we move on here, we are to prepare a journal entry to record the assets acquired and the liabilities assumed in the merger on January 1st of 2014. So what we need to first figure out is what was the consideration that we paid for the um, What was the consideration for the um, purchase, the acquisition of the subsidiary? We know we paid cash of four hundred fifty thousand. We also gave stock. We gave stock of 9,000 shares, the par value was 10, but the fair value was 15. So 9,000 shares at 15 bucks a share, higher math here, equals nine. Um, Fair value of shoot. What am I? Okay, that's why I'm screwing up. Okay, thank you. Here we go. Here we um, 
paid four hundred fifty thousand in cash. We issued a hundred and four thousand shares with a fair value of twelve bucks a share. So we do here a hundred and four thousand shares at twelve bucks a share. Whoops. Which is one million two hundred and forty four hundred one million two hundred forty eighty thousand. So fair value of stock issued is the one million two forty eight. So the combination is the consideration paid for subsidiary or one million six hundred and ninety eight thousand that's what we paid in order to purchase the subsidiary so now we need to look at the basis or the book value less any fair value acquired to determine our goodwill so if we go back here on 2014 it just gives us the fair values so we see here we've got cash of 75 receivables of 193 inventory of 281 patents of 525 customer relationships 500 equipment 295 accounts payable we're receiving of minus 121 because that will reduce um, the fair value and our long-term liabilities of 450 75 193 281 so we've got 75 193 281 oops um, 525 500 295 And then our um, accounts payable 121 and long term liabilities of 450. Minus 121, minus our 450. So the fair value of what we're receiving is fair value of net assets you get what I'm saying and liabilities assumed is one million two hundred ninety eight thousand so the difference is going to be goodwill the goodwill is going to show the consideration minus the net value of our assets or 400,000 is going to be recognized in this combination. So we need to figure all that out in order to then prepare the journal entry to show the acquisition. So we start with, let me just go back and make sure I'm Prepare the journal entry to record the assets acquired and the liabilities assumed in the Beltran merger. So we basically will need to show all the assets we're acquiring. We're acquiring the, let me go back here guys, the assets of Cash of seventy-five thousand, the receivables of one ninety-three, the inventory, the patents, the customer relationships, the equipment, and then we're assuming those liabilities. So we need to show the transaction. We show our cash that we are receiving of seventy-five thousand. We'll show the receivables of 193 we'll show our inventory of 281 